Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to get started here in a moment. Let's first of all, though, have a word of prayer, and, and let me. Uh, uh, then I'll introduce the uh, the group, and uh, they'll begin their their program this evening. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for allowing us to come tonight here in your house and worship. I pray, Father, that you'll be with each of us. Just give us a good blessing, Father. Fill us with your uh, uh, spirit this evening. And, Father, just let us enjoy this and, and uh, just have a good time this evening, fellowshipping with one another and enjoying the music this evening. I ask that you be with Jason and Ernie, Father. Just um, watch over them, take care of them. Father, bless their their uh, program that they're about to present. And then I ask, Father, that you continue to bless them as they travel, give them safe travel. Continue to bless them, Father, in their ministry that they do. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. Thank you especially for your son, Jesus, and I ask all these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our duo this evening, Jason and Ernie Couch and the Revival Gospel Group. They're going to be singing for us. And they're going to be singing, uh, oh, probably 45 minutes or so. Then we're going to take a little short intermission. This is a love offering concert. So if you'd like to give your uh, love offering, if you, if you have a check, you can make it payable to Central Baptist Church. Uh, and then Calvin will take those, add them all up, and then we'll give uh, the, uh, the group just one check from the church. So if you'd like to do that, but that'll be coming up a little bit later on. Uh, Jason and <clears throat> Ernie um, were in concert, I think, I think they said this morning uh, over in the Waco area, also yesterday over in the Waco area. From here I'm thinking he's, uh, I think he said they're going back uh, home for a few days and then back down to Texas again. So um, let's, uh, let's welcome, I, I think we're going to be blessed this evening, some good southern gospel music. Let me uh, introduce to you Jason and Ernie Couch. You did good, Leon. All Thank right. you so much. Put your hands together. Help us out. Hang on, Dad. The drums just broke. <laughs> right, out the, right out of the chute. Leon, say all that again. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. Put those hands together. Help us out. Get that blood to circulate, you know. Well, we come here to worship, we come here to praise, to lift up a name that's above all names, to testify to his grace and power. A great redeemer in the darkest hour, he'll never change. He stays the same, Jesus is his name. Yeah, we come here to worship, we come here to praise, to lift up a name that's above all names. To testify to his grace and power A great redeemer in the darkest hour He'll never change He stays the same Jesus is his name It's the name that brings hope to our hopelessness The name that still loves our beloveliness The name that brings peace to our soul's unrest The name that's beyond what we can express It's the name that brings joy and unhappiness The name that gets power over I've stress, the name that is strength when our faith seems less. The name that restores all the brokenness. Help me out. One, two, three. Well, we've come, come here to worship. We've come, come here to praise. To praise. Lift up the name that's above all names. To testify to his grace and power. A great redeemer in the darkest hour. He'll never change. He stays the same. Jesus is his name. One more time, son. Yeah, we've come here to worship, we've come here to praise, to lift up the name that's above all names, to testify to his grace and power, a great redeemer in the darkest hour, he'll never change, he stays the same, Jesus is his name, he'll never change, he stays the same, Jesus is his name. Thank you all for helping us out on that opening song there. Before we go any further, is it too loud? Are you, well, thank you. <laughs> Let me ask this. Are you semi-happy? Good. We, we, we love semi-happy folks. In way of additional introduction, uh, 
as Leon said, my name is Ernie Couch. This is my favorite son, Jason Couch. And the reason he is my favorite son is he is an only child, you know. And so he's been the best and the worst of the lot down through the years. And uh, we have been working on the road together. This is our 33rd year out there. We, uh, we do this full time, coast to coast. Well, up until COVID hit, and we took a little sabbatical in there, a forced sabbatical, as it were. But uh, it is good to be back. I believe. This is our first time here at Central Baptist. It is. We uh, have been in Crockett at least once before. Sometime in, in the past. But we're delighted to be with you uh, this evening. For our edification, how many of you, it, it, this is your home church, your home congregation? Wonderful. Do we have any folks that are visitors this evening? Thank you, thank you so much for being here, visiting from another congregation. We are going to be sharing with you some old songs and some new songs, some fast songs and some slow songs, and we hope that we sing at least one song that proves to be a blessing to you and maybe makes these next few days go just a little smoother for you. Well, here we are in the, we've waited through two years of COVID now. I was hoping uh, uh, we would be completely out of the woods by this time, but uh, that is not the case. And uh, we have all gone through this together type thing. I want us to, to start off by sharing a song with you that Andre Crouch penned many years ago. I think most of you have heard it down through the years. But this song speaks to me, and uh, I think even more so having gone through these past two years. And it talks about how that in the worst of times, and in those times when we can't see the forest for the trees, you know, that we have a loving Heavenly Father that's there to undergird us and carry us through those times that we do not comprehend completely. I want you to listen as we do our version of Through It All. I've had many tears and sorrows, had questions for tomorrow. There have been times when I didn't know right from wrong, oh no. But in every situation, God gave me consolation. He said, my trials come to only make me strong. I've been a lot of places and I've seen a lot of faces. But there were times when I felt so all alone, oh yes. But in those lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, my Jesus let me know that I was still his own. Through it all, oh, through it all, well, I learned to trust in Jesus, mm, learned to trust in God. Through it all, oh, through it all, well, I learned to depend upon his word. So I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys and I thank him for the storms that he's brought me through. Oh yes, if I'd never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve them, never know what they in his word could do. His word could do. Through it all, oh, through it all, well, I've learned to trust in Jesus, learned to trust in God through it all. Oh, through it all. Well, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I've learned to depend upon God's Word. <laughs> Through it all. Thank you for letting me share that message with you. Thank you so much. I tell you what, I want to sing a song for you now that Dad wrote. We put on our today's special CD. It talks about how one of these days Christ is going to return. The song's called Soon. He spoke to those around. Seems 
so incredible, so incredible. love so indelible, soon. He's coming back soon. Oh, soon. Songs indescribable, soon. Joy insurpassable, soon. Be at home soon. Some folks think it's a fairy tale that he'll come back again. The dead is dead and gone is gone. He met life's final. Incredible, so love so indelible, so he's coming back soon. Oh, soon, songs indescribable, so joy insurpassable, so. Be at home soon. Whoa, the heavens will burst open. The air with glory fill, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And soon. So incredible, so love so indelible, so we'll be at home soon. Soon, a new song there for you. <clears throat> thank you, thank you so much. Ah. Uh, I'm sure that you're all familiar with the uh, opening chapters there in the uh, book of Acts. There is a great narrative that talks about God pouring out His Spirit in a very special way upon the early church on the day of Pentecost. And as you well know, that was 50 days after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior in the Jewish calendar, 50 days after Pentecost. God had told the early church, and it wasn't a whole herd of folks. He said, I want you to hang around Jerusalem. I have something special for you. And sure enough, on the day of Pentecost, we were told they were all gathered together in one place, and God poured out his spirit in this very special way, energizing, empowering the early church to get out there and hit the highways and byways, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, they don't call it the bad news of Jesus Christ. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. And the, one of the things that bothers me a little bit about that narrative is we only have one account of it. We only had one reporter there uh, telling what went on. I think it had been fantastic if we all could have been there collectively and experienced what that reporter saw and heard uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, at least, you know, we've got four Gospels, and each of those writers gives us a little different viewpoint of the life and ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know? Each of them takes a little different tack to it and so forth. But with uh, that particular uh, narrative there in the book of Acts, there is only the one reporter. And the best way he could describe it, he said it appeared as if there were like uh, little flames of fire dancing over the heads of the folks that were there. He saw a twilight zone type thing, you know, going on. And then he said it sounded like a mighty rushing wind that, that filled the place where they were at. Uh, when I read that, I think back, 
I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. We've lived in Nashville for a hundred years now, but I grew up in Wichita, and my dad worked for Boeing Aircraft. I was talking to one of the gentlemen uh, before the service that's in the, uh, has an aviation background, and uh, my dad worked the flight line there back during the Cold War era and uh, during the B-47s, B-52s during that time. And all night long, they would run those engines. We only live about a mile from, uh, from the plant there. And so you'd hear those engines all night long. After a while, it just became background noise, you know? And you didn't think anything about it. Let me ask you this. Anybody here ever lived by a railroad track? Look at you. You know, half the people here at some point in life lived by a railroad track. I'm sure when you first moved in by that railroad track, when that 2 a.m. freight would come through, it'd about jar you out of the bed and the noise and the racket and everything. After a while, you got used to it and you'd sleep right through. Well, that's the way it was with those jet engines. Finally, it was just background noise, you know. You just sleep through it and not think anything about it. But when I read that passage of Scripture there and read that narrative and he talks about the mighty rushing wind, I think about, a jet engine. I can just hear it come and about to blow them out of the place, you know. I want you to listen to this up tempo Lanny Wolf tune that uh, it's, uh, it talks about the day of Pentecost and uh, it's simply called The Wind is Blowing Again. It goes something like this. Ha! Oh, the wind is blowing again. I say the wind is a blowing again. Oh, just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. There was a crowd gathered round from all over town. They came to see what it was all about. There was a sound that came down from the upper room of where the Holy Ghost was being poured out. It sounded just like the roar of a mighty wind as it fell on every one of them. And the wind that blew at Pentecost, praise God, is blowing again. Oh, the wind is blowing again. I say the wind is blowing again. Oh, just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. The wind of God is blowing through the world today as the prophet Joel said it would do. For Peter said on the day of Pentecost is for you and your children too. So open up your heart and let the wind blow in. You'll never, never, ever be the same again. And the wind that blew at Pentecost, praise God, is blowing again. Oh, the wind is blowing again. I say the wind is blowing again. Oh, just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Help me out. Oh, the wind is blowing again. I say the wind is blowing again. Oh, just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. One more time. Oh, the wind is blowing again. I say the wind is blowing again. Oh, just like the day of Pentecost, the wind it just keeps blowing, wind is blowing us again. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us out on that opening tune there. Jason, i tell you something that I suddenly discovered is I do not have any of these up here. Are there any back there? Yes, they're in the little yellow tub. Would you... Go fe fetch those. That's a Tennessee term. Go fetch those, please. We have a little chorus that we would like to teach you. And uh, we've been using this for uh, a number of years, and we've got thousands of folks coast to coast singing uh, this particular little chorus. It's called More Like You. And uh, I think looking around here, we've all been on the planet long enough to figure out we are not a perfect people. We got some rough edges, some splinters, knot holes, and so forth. And Jason, see if you can uh, enlist someone to help you uh, disseminate those amongst the troops back there. And uh, I'd like one when you, when you get through. And we do have some rough edges. There's times I get up in the morning and I feel like God's got a big old sheet of coarse sandpaper and he's just <laughs> sanding on me, trying to shape me up to be what he would have me be. Now, we may have some rough edges ourselves, 
But hear me, we serve a perfect master, amen? Oh, that was pitiful. Thank you, brother, for amen in that. I tell you what, we're here in a Baptist church tonight. I want to hear a big old hearty Baptist amen. We serve a perfect master, amen? amen. That's more like it. <laughs> if anything deserves a big old hearty amen, it is the reality of the perfection of our Lord and Savior. Got a couple right back over here. Did you grab me one He's of those? Good. He's good. Let me, may I? Thank you. So you're doing an excellent job, Leon. I tell you, I appreciate that. And, but we want to teach you this little course. Uh, he calls on us to emulate him in our daily walk and daily talk and so forth. And that's where I get to whine. You know, I go, well, Lord, I, I, I'm not perfect. Believe you me, God already knows that. You know, that's why I went to so much expense and trouble uh, to provide a means of restoration for us, a means of redemption for us. I want Jason and I to sing through this little course. It's a very simple melody, very simple lyrics, and then we want you to sing along with us. And it goes something like this. Help me be like you and help me sing like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Help me live like you and forgive like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Here's a second verse. Help me talk hmm, like you and learn to walk like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Help me pray like you and live each day like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Like I said, very simple melody, very simple lyrics. Now we want you all to help us sing this. And you say, I don't sing. I don't care. Just read it real loud, okay, if nothing else. And I hope you won't be like a situation we ran into a few years back. We were singing somewhere up in the Dakotas. And uh, it was one of them big old long shotgun type churches. It had central aisle that went forever. And uh, came time for the congregation to sing this little chorus. And I was encouraging them, you know, to join in and so forth. And about halfway down that middle aisle, I see this old boy leaning out, and he's got his little piece of paper, and he's going, waving it at me down that central aisle there. He just kept on. And finally, I looked at Jason, like, you know, I might as well try to figure out what's going on. I said, sir, how may I help you? And one of the saddest things I've ever heard, he said, he said, Mine's blank. <laughs> oh, oh, I was reaching for my hanky. I mean, I tell you what, it was sad the way he said that mine's blank, you know. I thought he was going to start blubbering. I said, sir, I said, it's okay. I said, it's no big deal. I said, sir, turn it over. If you're sitting there looking at a blank piece of paper, flip that over. There may be something on the other side. And if it's blank on both sides, scoot over by your neighbor there and look on their piece of paper, you know. Now we want you all to help us sing this. Lean into it. It's just us and the Lord here tonight, so we might as well, might as well get into this song. Everybody help us. Here we go. Help me be like you and help me Oh, give me a little more. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Help me, uh-huh, and forgive like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Do that second verse. Help me, uh-huh, and learn to like you help me lord to be more like you help me yes and live each day like you help me lord to be more like you now that 
wasn't too bad for the first time through. I think you can do a little more. I want about 240% out of you this time. You've all heard it now. You've sung through it. You know the lyrics. You know the melody. And let's see. We're in the great state of Texas. Love Texas. I've told my wife for years, if Texas ever secedes from the Union, I'm moving to Texas. I love Texas. And uh, I took one of those uh, mail-order correspondence courses on geography. You may have remembered that, son, and studied about all the state capitals and so forth. Is Austin still the capital of Texas? Yeah, I got the, must have an Austonian or whatever they call them no, back there. No, she was just impressed you knew it. Oh, I see. Well, well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I, how far is it from here to Austin? I know it's a ways. A fur, a fur, a fur piece. piece. It's a fur piece to Austin. I tell you, I want us to sing this again. I want you to lean into it. And I want the folks down in Austin to step out on their porches and go, what's that caterwauling up north, you know? I mean, I want you to lean into it. I want to see these little chandeliers sway into the music, little bits of dust raining down on you, you know? Here we go. Everybody sing it. Help me be like you and help me. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Help me, <laughs> oh, and forgive like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Sing that last verse. Help me, uh huh, and learn to like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. Help me pray like you and live each day like you. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. You did excellent. Give yourself a hand. Thank you. You did fantastic on this little chorus. I continue to sing it. You though visiting from other congregations, take it back. Share it with the folks back home, but most important, let's try to be more and more like our master each and every day. Thank you so much. You did great. Back before the electronic age, when folks would go on vacation, often you would receive these little pieces of paper in the mail called postcards. Yeah. You remember postcards? Yeah. And, you know, it'd often have a tropical destination on the front, and you'd turn it over, and they'd talk about just how amazing life was, uh -huh. how it got no better than this right here. And then at the end, they'd put that little catchphrase, uh -huh. wish you were here. Uh, you remember yeah. that? I couldn't stand getting those <laughs> postcards, wish you were here. They didn't wish hard enough to buy me a ticket no. to that sunny destination, you know. Uh, uh, but the gentleman that wrote this song, and this is a song some of you I'm sure have heard through the years, uh, was thinking about postcards, but he was thinking, wouldn't it be neat if you could get a postcard from heaven, from a friend or a loved one, saying wish you were here. And I'm going to play it for you <laughs> in a moment. <laughs> Ah, I think that's it. <laughs> Technology. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. I can just see them walking on the shore of heaven. They're praising the Lord, watching the tide roll in. Friends that have gone on know oh, how I miss you so. And somehow I know if you could, you'd let me know that you're doing fine and it doesn't hurt anymore. Things couldn't be better, heaven is worth waiting for. 
that you miss me too until then you'll be thinking of me and i know if you could talk to me now here's what you'd say to me i wish you were here it's such a beautiful place I wish you were here Nothing but clear sunny days See it never rains and no one complains We haven't seen a Having a great time, wish you were here. I can just see them walking on the shore together. They're talking with Jesus, safe and secure in His love. Friends and loved ones walking in heavenly peace. And I know if they could talk to me now, here's what they'd say. It's such a beautiful place I wish you were here Nothing but clear sunny days See it never rains and no one complains We haven't seen a tear We're having Great time, wish you were here. No, it never rains and no one complains. We haven't seen a tear. We're having a great time. Isn't that a killer song? I love those lyrics. Thank you, son. I love that. <clears throat> I like that last phrase down there where it says, it never rains and no one complains. Until I heard that song, I had never considered that aspect of heaven. There will be no complaining in heaven because there will not be anything to complain about. Now, let me say this. If one of your favor, most at most disfavoritist pastimes is complaining, hear me, you need to get in all you can in this dimension because when you cross over, you won't get to complain about anything type thing. Nothing to complain about. So if complaining is your favorite pastime, get up early in the morning, get out your checklist, write down the things you want to complain about that day, and get in every bit that you can while you can. Be happy in it, you know, in complaining because one of these days you won't have that opportunity anymore. It says it never rains and no one complains, but my favorite part of that phrase is, and we haven't seen a tear. I heard a pastor a few years back uh, bringing a message on that particular passage of Scripture talking about God wiping away the tears from our eyes, you know. He said, we serve a tear wiper away God. That's kind of a long title for God, but it's a reality. He says, one of these days said, whatever brought tears to your eyes, negative things said, tears of failure, tears of separation, tears of hurt, tears of pain. Whatever it is negative that brought tears to your eyes in this dimension, he said, I'm going to wipe those all away. That's the type of God we serve, 
a God that wants to love us. He wants to have fellowship with us. He wants to bless us, you know. I, every time you sing that song, I think about, uh, uh, can, can you imagine being, we, we're told just a little bit about what heaven's like, but, uh, you know, the master said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come and receive you to myself. So you can be where I am type thing going on there, you know, and that's encouraging to me. And then he uh, goes on that similar dissertation there, and he says, uh, in my father's house are many what? Mansions is the way we most uh, commonly translate that. I've been told, I'm no Greek scholar, and many of you, I'm sure, uh, uh, realize the, that uh, probably a little better translation into English is, uh, uh, in my father's house are many rooms just like mansions. And you say, well, <laughs> what difference does it make? You know, well, I like the concept of the intimacy of having my very own room in the Father's house. My, my, I like that thought. I'm a child of God. I've got my very own room in the Father's house. Can't you imagine getting in the morning, coming down those golden stairs and sliding your feet under the Father's table, getting your big old bowl and spoon and that big old box of holy o's or whatever they eat in heaven. I don't know what we'll be eating in heaven, you know. And just sitting there and having food and fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I know that trivializes the whole thing. It says it has not entered into our minds all the marvelous blessings our Heavenly Father has in store. So we've got something to look forward to. Jason, thank you for sharing that song. What do you want to do next, son? I tell you what, we'll do one more song, turn things back over to Leon just for a moment, and I want us to go back to the 1970s. Do you remember the 1970s? I almost remember the 1870s, son. I, I go way back, Bondo and spray paint. That's, that's, that's all holds me together. I think most of you will know this song. Sing along with us. It goes like this. <laughs> Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who called the sea. And take a look at yourself, and you can look at others liberally. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Well, every time I look into the holy book, I want to tremble. When I read about the part where a carpenter cleared the temple mm -hmm. Upon the fire and the cellar with no different fellas And when I profess to be Causing me shame to know I'm not the man I should be mm -hmm. Oh, put your hand in the hand of the man who still the water Put your hand in the hand of the man who called the sea Take a look at yourself, and you can look at others differently. Putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. My mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. And when I'm down on my knees, that's when I'm closest to heaven. My daddy lived this life with three kids and a wife, and he did what he had to do. Call me just enough of what it takes to get me through. Oh, put your hand in the hand of the man who still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. And take a look at yourself, and you can look at all this differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Some good advice. Put your hand in the hand of the man. Come right ahead, Leon. All right, we're going to take a, a love offering now. Again, if you if you want to write a check, just make it to Central Baptist, and then we'll take and add all that together, and, uh, and just then give them one check from the church. But I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward here. 
Have you enjoyed it so far? A great job. Well, thank great you. Great job. I tell you what, for our offertory, let's sing Because He Lives. You all know this. Here we go. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. living just because he lives. Sing it again like you believe it. Here we go. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know the living just because he lives. You did excellent. Give yourself a hand. I love that great old Bill Gaither chorus, Because He Lives. Thank you so much. Dad mentioned we've uh, been traveling for 33 years, and when you travel around the country, you quickly realize not everybody worships the same way. No. Lots of people doing it lots of different ways, and we typically go in, do what we do, fall in line with what they do, and everything works out okay. Every once in a while, though, you huh. run into a unique situation, something you've never experienced before. A uh, quick example, we were singing over in Virginia, and uh, this was a long shotgun-type church, had a central aisle and pews going off that central aisle. And as we were bringing the equipment in, we looked down the row at the pews, and we noticed every pew in this church, every pew, had at least four tambourines on that. every pew. Every pew, all yep. the way from the back to the front. Yeah. Never seen that many tambourines before. I don't think tambourine factories have that many tambourines. <laughs> but never had seen that many before. And now we got excited, to be honest, thought this is a musical bunch. They are going to get into this. Yeah. Sure enough, we hop up there, start singing that first song, and up come the sea of tambourines. Amazing. And they start playing along. Mm -hmm. Only problem was not everybody was doing the same thing Nobody. on their tambourine that the other person Nobody. was doing. Just it was just noise. <laughs> She's all night long. Sound like a rattlesnake convention, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all night long. I don't think we've been back there. No, son, we haven't. No. Um, anyways, uh, another example, uh, Pennsylvania, same type situation, bringing down the equipment through an aisle, looking down through the, at the pews, and we noticed at this church, everywhere where they have these pockets where you put hymnals, everywhere they had stuffed in this church, in all those pockets, cheerleader pom-poms. Yes. All over. Everywhere. Never had seen that before. Now, I didn't think that much about it. Thought maybe they had just gone through some sort of vacation Bible school-y thing that was sports-themed or pastor was bringing a series of sports-themed sermons. They were there to enhance that or something. Just didn't think that much about it. Just never seen it before. Got up, started singing, and that's when we learned what the pom-poms were for. At this particular church, you were not allowed to clap your hands inside the church. That was a no-no. But you could <laughs> shake your pom poms. <laughs> That's right. So while we're up singing, over here somebody starts shaking. Over here somebody. Start, there was a whole lot of shaking whole going lot on. Whole lot of shaking there. going on. That's yeah. right. And so at the end, everybody grabs their pom poms and gives it one of these. Never have seen that. Me. Based on the smiles, I think next business meeting somebody needs to bring up pom poms. All right. I tell you what, uh, scriptures tell us one of these days we're going to a place we've never been before, but instead of it being awkward, we're going to feel at home. Well, I'm going to a city with streets like purest gold and walls of shining jasper and gates of pearl, I'm told. There'll be no need for sun or moon or stars to light the way. Oh, the glory of the Holy God will shine through in this day. Well, I've never, never been, been to heaven, but I know I surely know 
I'll feel at home. I may not fully comprehend what lies in store for me. What wondrous glory, beauty grand, oh, there my eyes may see. Without a doubt, my greatest thrill shall be when I shall meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and bow down at his feet. Oh, I'll meet so many loved ones, saints from long ago. I will socialize and harmonize with friends around God's throne. We'll sing a brand new song proclaiming worthy is the Lamb. For the one who died and rose again to save this fallen man. Well, I've never, never been, been to heaven, heaven, but I know, I surely know, I'll feel at home. I may not fully comprehend what lies in store for me. What wondrous glory, beauty, grand, oh, there my eyes may see. Without a doubt, my greatest thrill will be when I shall meet the King of kings and Lord of lords and bow down at his feet. Oh, no evil words or thoughts or deeds will enter in that place. And no sorrow, pain, or cry there, no tears upon my face. Oh, death will never come and I can never upon the door. All things that will be made new, all things will be no more. Well, I've never, never been, been to heaven, heaven, but I know, I surely know, I'll feel at home. I know I'll feel at home. <laughs> ah, it's your turn. Go get me one of them new CDs. <laughs> I tell you what, during the COVID, of course, we couldn't get out and uh, travel. All the churches had shut down for the most part, all the festivals, all that type of stuff. So we just sat at home and stared at each other for about 10 months. And uh, just before COVID hit, mom and dad decided to move out of Nashville proper. Uh, I lived just south of Nashville, and Dad and Mom lived in Nashville, and they had decided to move down towards where we live just before COVID hit, and I made the mistake of saying, Mom and Dad, you can come live with me until you find a place. You'll never say that again, will no. you, son? And so they moved in, and then COVID hit. And so when I say we stared at each other for 10 months, I mean we stared at each we other certainly did. for 10 months, didn't we? And uh, so we couldn't get out and sing, but we were able to do some recording. And, <laughs> and uh, so Dad had always wanted to do a Western project western theme project and i said here's your chance we've got nothing else going on get it done and so he did and uh last summer this came out it's called head and west I love it he's got my picture on the front there and i love that <laughs> that's an armadillo oh, and on the, uh, on the back on the back I'm sorry. you're close uh but anyways they uh it has all songs on here that are either western themed or have a western sound to them so there's Classic songs like Hank Williams, House of Gold, all the way to Roy and Dale's Happy Trails, Happy Trails to You. To you. Yep. And uh, then Dad wrote some new stuff on here. And in fact, I, I asked him if he would sing one of his compositions off this so you could get a taste of, of what this CD's like. And uh, so he's picked one out. Go try. try this one. Okay. Uh, this is a cowboy song. Okay, we're here in Texas. This is a cowboy song. Uh, don't ask me to explain it any farther than that because I have no other explanation. It is just a cowboy song. It, it's called Wyoming Snow. Goes, let me see if I can remember. It goes up. Wyoming snow was blowing, not much highway still showing, and my fuel gauge it was riding on E. And in the gathering night, I saw a gas sign and a light of 40 miles somewhere up north of Laramie. I pulled off and went in a two-pump store of rusty tin. 
Oh, and the clerk, he gave a howdy to me. And in the back, cowboys were jawing round a wood stove while thawing. And I heard one telling his philosophy. This is what he said. There are givers and takers, menders and breakers, winners and losers, they say. Quitters and hopers, some proofs and some jokers, haters and lovers, you see. He went on to say, there are doers and talkers, stickers and walkers, dreamers and skeptics, there be livers. Dyers, laughers, and criers, and all kinds of folks in between. Then he asked this question Oh, but what do we all have in common? Oh, things in this life we all need, like someone to love us. And faith in God above us And a soul that just has to be free I sipped my coat back up real tight Filled my tank, drove out of sight But the cowboy's words lingered with me And as the snow filled my headlights thought of how that he was right and how much truth there was in his philosophy oh but what do we all have in common oh things in this life we all need like someone to love us and faith in God above us And a soul that just has to be free As I drove on through the night Thought of how that he was right And how much truth there was in his philosophy A cowboy song for you. Thank you for setting through it. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Real quick, let me tell you about our other recordings, um, which are, where are the recordings? Where'd you put all that stuff? The CD? Oh, they're out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, they're out there. And <laughs> so uh, I won't go into great detail because after 33 years, there is a pile of CDs out there. But I do want to tell you this. We always put a special guest on each one of our CDs, just something we've done since we've started. I'm going to tell you who they are in case you're familiar with their music. You'll know which CD they're on. First CD was called Taking Flight, featured a legend in Southern style gospel music, a gentleman by the name of Jake Hess. Uh, Jake sang with the Statesman, started the Imperials, was later on those Gaither videos if you've seen any of them. Uh, the next CD, Going Higher, featured another patriarch in Southern style gospel music, a gentleman by the name of James Blackwood, one of the original members of the original Blackwood Brothers Quartet. Being in Nashville, we kind of switched gears for the third CD, Riding Fast, and uh, got country music legend George Jones uh, to join us on that awesome. one. If yeah. you listen to a variety of Christian music, the Christian rock group Petra uh, joined us on our Hanging On CD, and then a great female pop singer of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, Miss Patti Page, uh, joined us on our uh, today's special yeah. CD. Takes Two followed that. Inspirational singer John Starnes and Jay Parrick, who sang tenor with Gold City for a, uh, a long time, uh, joined us on that project. And then we have uh, some specialty CDs like an all hymns project. If you like the old hymns of the church, George Beverly Shea, longtime associate of Reverend Billy Graham, joined oh, us on man. that one. Uh, other end of the spectrum, we got one called Praise Worship, Dallas Home, uh, Texas Boy, joined us yep. on that one. And uh, we've got a children's project. Any of you watch Hee Haw in this neck of the woods when it was on? Come on. Come on. Oh. 
Yeah, I thought she was going to have a testimony for a minute. Was there <laughs> clapping in the balcony? <laughs> okay. If you watch Hee Haw, there was a puppet on Hee Haw by the name of Shotgun Red, and Shotgun Red is our special guest on the Children's Project Forever After. There is a CD back there that features the ukulele <laughs> throughout the project. Tiny Tim mm -hmm. is the special guest on that. Please stay seated. <laughs> okay, no rush. No rush for that one. <laughs> plenty um, of time. <laughs> plenty of time later. That's right. Um, if you're not liking our singing tonight, it's okay. that's okay. We don't take that personal at all. There's a couple instrumental CDs out there. No singing. No singing. Um, one is called Elevator Music, features Boots Randolph, the great saxophonist, and the other is called Watermelon Rhines, and it features Kenny Lovelace, who was Jerry Lee Lewis's lead guitarist and musical director oh, for um, years umpteen now. years. Yeah. And uh, it's out there as well. What have I left out? Help me out. We've got some Christmas. And got Christmas some CDs. Solos. I'm sure you're tired of Christmas, but uh, <laughs> Christmas uh, time is out there. Mary Wilson of the Supremes joined us on that one. Christmas again, the Oak Ridge Boys joined us on that one, and Hell Hell Emmanuel, which is a Christmas cantata, just tells the story of Christ in song. But in between are the scripture readings, and uh, James Earl Jones, the actor, came in and read the scripture voice. for us. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, and anytime you can have Darth Vader read the Bible, that's pretty cool. <laughs> the voice of Darth Vader. Um, let's see. Uh, we got a project out there called 20 Tour that marked our 20th anniversary, and every song has a special guest on that one. So people from gospel music, people from country music, even early rock and rollers like Danny and the Juniors, the Shondells, the Buckinghams, Lou Christie, Tommy Rowe, folks like that. The Angels are on there. Anybody here remember a song? My boyfriend's back and you're going to be in trouble. See them heads nodding, son? That's the Angels. They, uh, they were our guests on that. Not that song, but... That's Doing gospel music with us. That everybody that said yes were the same people that said they watch Hee Haw. They're good people then. <laughs> good folks. That's right. So please, come by, check all that out. Have I left anything out? I can't I think of anything. I don't know. That's most of um, it. Also, we are working on a project right now that should be out any day, hopefully in the next few months, oh. if my father will work hard on it. Hmm. Um, and it's called 30 Rock, and it marks our 30th anniversary, which was 2019, when we started working on this project. Uh, but out. COVID kind of moved things along. But we're calling it 30 Rock, and that's because we've got uh, guests from the rock field joining us on every song. So there's guys from Leonard Skinner, 38 Special, Poco, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, um, I mentioned earlier. Wings, Santana, on and on and on. Yeah. Just a whole list of, of rock guys joining us on this, doing gospel music. And uh, <laughs> it has been so much fun to put together. And uh, I, w I want us to um, uh, do a song, not off that, but let's pick it up a notch and uh, do one that Dallas Home, I mentioned him. Oh, this okay. is off our Praise and Worship CD. And uh, it goes like this. Well, my Jesus is a river of love, and it flows from heaven above, and he'll take every sin you have and wash it away. Just jump in the water today, you won't drown if you learn to pray. My Jesus is a river of love, and he's flowing your way. There's a river flowing out from heaven's sea, uh-huh. There's a river reaching out to you and me. Streams of living water, the clear as they can be. I come on in, the water's fine, it'll set you free. Well, my Jesus is a river of love, and it flows from heaven above. And he'll take every sin you have and he'll wash it away. Just jump in the water today. You won't drown if you learn to pray. My Jesus is a river of love, and he's flowing your way. If you need a cleansing, children don't delay. There's a mighty river flowing here today. It can wash and make you as clean as you can be. Come on in, the water's fine. Set you free. Well, my Jesus is a river of love, and it flows from heaven above, and he'll take every sin you have and wash it away. Just jump in the water today. You won't drown if you learn to pray. 
My Jesus is the river of love that is flowing your way. Help me out on this. Here we go. Oh, my Jesus is the river of love, and it flows from heaven above. And he'll take every sin you have and he'll wash it away. Just jump in the water today. You won't drown if you burn the gray. My Jesus is a river of love and he's flowing your way. Yeah, my Jesus is a river of love and he's flowing your way. Oh, thank you so much for helping us out on that little up-tempo song there. Thank you, thank you. I want to sing a song for you that a 15-year-old boy wrote, and uh, I think you all know this one, and I hope it's your testimony as well. Love the words to this. Without him, I could. Without him, I truly fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Without him, I would be dying. And without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, life would Thank God I'm saved. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Great old song, son. Thank you for sharing that. I think Mylon Lefevre pinned that when he was like, like I say, I believe he was 15. 15 yeah. And I love down there where it asks, do you know him today? You know, isn't that the great eternal question type thing? Great song. Thank you. I noticed a lot of you singing along on that one, which helps me remember the words, so thank you. And, uh, but uh, I tell you what, I want, can we do a sing-along, one more, yep, that, I mean, a sing-along song? Uh, I want to do an old hymn of the church, and y'all sing okay. along with it, because it's obvious I'm, you know it. I'm going to go over there. Traditional hymn? Yes. Traditional okay. Let's do that. And uh, one of my favorite hymn writers was a lady by the name of Fanny J. Crosby. Yes wrote just a herd of great gospel songs. In fact, to this day, she holds the record 
for most songs published of any songwriter, any style of music. And uh, I love that. She was speaking at a prison in uh, New York City area. And while she was up talking, an inmate stood up in the back of the auditorium and he cried out, Oh God, don't pass me by. And that stuck in her head. And she went home and began to write the lyrics that became uh, the great hymn, Pass Me Not. And I, I think many of you know that one. Uh, it, I don't know, I if, don't it's, know if it's in the hymnal. You, are there hymnals there in the pews in front of you? It may just have the chorus now in the, in I, the I'm Baptist not sure. Hymnal. Does it have Pass Me Not in there or not? It may, may not, depending upon the publication date. I think most of you know that great old chorus anyhow. Anybody see it? Look at that. Look at that. And I love know, technology. That's why they keep y'all around. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you know this song, sing yeah, along with sing us. Sing that it goes chorus like this. with us. sing out. You did great on that. I love that old hymn of the church. Pass me not. Thank you so much. <laughs> we are not going to keep you much longer. And thank you so much for coming out and, and listening to our music. It means a lot to us. I want to sing for you now the uh, song that's probably our most popular and most requested song. And uh, it's because of the words, not because of our singing or anything like that. But it talks about how much God loved us in sending his son. 
You may recall this melody. We've changed the lyrics. <laughs> starry, starry night There beneath the olive trees Crying out on bended knees The weight of the world bearing on his mind Father and the Son, not my will but thine be done, a greater victory to be won by the shedding of his precious blood. How I appreciate what you did at Calvary, how you suffered for humanity to pay a price that we could not afford. Many would not listen, they know not how. Perhaps they'll listen now. Starry, starry night. As tears of blood fell to the ground, no other answer to be found. A sacrifice that we did not deserve, grace would soon prevail. Even then he knew our names. It was for us he bore the shame all crafted by the Master's loving hands. How I appreciate what you did at Calvary, how you suffered for humanity to pay a price that we could not afford Many would not listen, they know not how. Perhaps they'll listen now, though some will not love you. But still your love is true. And if they just look inside that starry, starry night, you gave your life as only you could do. See, I don't have the words to say or praise to reach the depths of how much I owe you. Starry, starry night, Praying there in agony, there but for the likes of me. How can so many turn a blind eye? No argument he gave. He stood there beaten, cursed, and bound. A royal robe and thorny crown. The ultimate sacrifice was paid. How I appreciate what you did at Calvary. How you suffered for humanity to pay a price that we could not afford. Many would not listen, they know not how. I pray they're listening now. Thank you, son. I love that. I love that song, Starry, Starry Night. We want to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening. You've been a, a wonderful group, and uh, we love coming and meeting new folks. It's good to 
be in familiar places, familiar faces, but it's also good to see brand new faces also. And we appreciate you coming out this evening. Uh, th- we're not going to have a formal time of invitation uh, this evening, but uh, uh, we just want you to know, uh, we'd like to thank, first of all, to everyone here is blood-bought, born again, on your way to heaven, our brothers and sisters in Christ. But on the outside chance that there might be someone here who has never faithed in Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We'd like to invite you to come by after the concert is over. Jason and I would be more than happy to sit down with you one-on-one and answer any questions you might have about our Lord and Savior. We would not want anyone leaving here without knowing that you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior. We are not talking about religion, folks. Religion will not get you to heaven but a one-on-one relationship with Jesus Christ will, you know. It's uh, been a few years back. Let me tell this story real quick. We'll do a closing song and let you go. Uh, we were singing over in uh, Virginia Beach, and uh, I, the, the facility stands out in my mind because it was the first time in, that I'd ever seen a, a building constructed in this manner, and I don't believe we've been in any others with the same type of floor plan. But once again, it was one of those big old long shotgun central aisle type Uh, churches the main sanctuary was but they had an identical sanctuary identical that went this way and they had a third sanctuary that went this way all three of them were identical length and seating and everything place was packed out that night and uh, we just had a great time and we had a a formal time of invitation and Jason and I we were up singing and uh, the pastor had come and stood there at that juncture of those uh, three sanctuaries and there, uh, I still remember way in the back I saw this lady step out in the aisle and come walking down the, the central aisle there in that middle section and I could tell by looking at her that she was over 12 okay uh, later she told me she was uh, 83 84 years old something like that all I'm saying is she was a full-grown mature lady been there done that life experience type person you know and she made her way down, and we're just human, you know. We, we try to read things into people when we first meet them. And I was observing her as she came forward and uh, stopped a moment to counsel with the pastor. I thought, well, age factor, maybe it's a health issue. She's coming asking prayer, you know, with regard to folks, it happens to all of us. We wear out. That's part of the territory. And then I got to think, well, maybe she's lost a loved one, you know coming down, having prayer, a request about that or something. I saw her and the pastor go over, and uh, they uh, uh, were having a moment of prayer over there. And, uh, you know, that comes with territory also. We we lose loved ones along the way. And uh, we finished up our song, turned it back to the pastor. He came, stood there at the front of those those buildings, and he said, uh, said, before we go, sister so-and-so has something she wants to share with you. The dear lady stood up, came over, stood at the front there, she said, uh, unless, said, unless you're a visitor here tonight, you already know who I am. And she told her name. I'm Sister So-and-so. Said, I've attended here for 52 years. That's a long time doing anything. You know, even corporations will let you retire after 30 years. But she had attended there uh, faithfully for 52 years. I thought, whoa, I'm impressed type thing. She said, and as you well know, said, uh, I've done everything you can imagine in this church, said I've uh, headed up the women's missionary organization, uh, said I have cottage prayer meetings in my home, I've taught Sunday school, all types of Bible courses, said you name it, I have done it, said in fact on Tuesday evening, she said that's our visitation evening for the church, said I go out every Tuesday evening knocking on doors to invite people to come and be a part of this fellowship here. She said, I've done it all, Said and said, I've almost had perfect attendance. Now, this is dating me, I know, but do any of you remember they used to give out these little pins, kind of look like a little shield if if you had perfect attendance in Sunday school? Anybody remember those? Bless you. Thank you so much. See, you thought I was making that up type thing. But if perfect attendance, you got a a little shield thing. If you had two years, got a little wreath that went around that. And then they had these little bitty bars that said third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right on down. She said, I've got enough of those perfect attendance bars, said to almost drag the aisle here. In 52 years, now get this, in 52 years, she said, I have only missed two Sundays 
two Sundays in 52 years not being in Sunday school and morning worship service. I had all to go in the Guinness Book of World Records right there type thing. And she said, those two Sundays that I happened to miss, said people come rushing over to the house after service expecting to find me dead or in a doornail, just laying out there sprawled out in the middle of the living room floor, you know. And uh, said, so said, I've done it all. When the doors are open, I'm here. Said, I've done everything in this church you can imagine except one thing. She said, I've never put my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And there was a big hush fell over those hundreds of people that were there, just oh, like this. There is an example, folks, of a lady who had religion but did not have a relationship. Now, she went on to say, she said, I've taken care of that this evening. She said, I've come, putting my faith and trust. Those people got to rejoicing. They weren't particularly the rejoicing sort of folks, but they got with it, and rightly so. It says there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels in heaven when someone is redeemed. We ought to get excited about that, and they did that particular evening. But that is a great example, and I like to share that because sometimes we get caught up in religion. And religion is not the answer to the world's problems. Jesus is still the answer to the world's problems, you know. And you say, well, didn't that count for anything? This lady had done a whole lot of good deeds. Yes, she had. But we're told that our self-righteousness in comparison to our high and holy God <laughs> is like filthy rags. And why is that? Doesn't it all balance out if we do enough good deeds? No, no. Because God did the ultimate deed in sending his son, his only begotten son. Hear me very clearly. <laughs> I would not give my son for this entire planet. You go, oh, brother, I thought you were a Christian. I am, but I'm not God. You see, I couldn't do that. And yet God saw fit to give the very best he had to give in the form of our Lord and Savior. You know, that is the reality there when we want to get all puffed up about all the good things we're doing. You know, like, I'm helping you out, God, type thing. I show up on Sunday morning. I've done my help for the week, type thing. No, folks, he did it all for us, gave the ultimate. And I, so I want to encourage you, if you've never put your faith and trust in this Jesus, if you have questions about it, come, sit down. We'll be more than happy to answer those questions. And... Uh, well, once again, we would not want anyone leaving here without knowing that you know him as personal Lord and Savior. One other thing I want to address, and then I'm going to cut these people loose. They're going, <laughs> what a long-winded bag of air he is, you know, type thing. Uh, I understand that uh, this is for, we've got some visitors back here. And uh, for your edification, I was told before uh, the service that the congregation here has a new pastor showing up. Now, I don't know anything about him, and when he shows up here, uh, you know, there's always that honeymoon time, and everybody loves everything that's going on, and he's sharing visions, and you're going, yes, brother, and everything's good. And then you, some of them kind of starts getting a little sour on it. Some, you know, he may be asking you to do something. You go, well, and now you're starting to meddle a little bit. And people go, I just don't like brother so-and-so, you know, that type of thing. Hear me very clearly, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are not admonished in the Bible to like one another. We're told to love one another. So I want you to, there's two things I've told my wife I hope God never called me to do. One was to be a college football coach, and the other was to be a pastor. Those are tough jobs. You know, when everything's going good and the team's winning is rah, rah, sis, kumba type thing, and then you hit a little bump in the road and suddenly what you want to do? Well, let's fire the coach. We forget that this is a team sport. You know, the church is a team sport. And the church grows as we grow and as we reach out as individuals. Two things the master asked from us, and then I'm going to let you go. Number one said be watching one of these days, I'm coming back again. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe 10,000 years. That's not relevant. But the reality is, he is coming back. And the other thing he said, until I get back here, he said, I want you to be telling folks about me. 
That is not a suggestion from our master. That is a command from him, each and every one of us, to be committed to be out there sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We can do it in a thousand different ways. But he said, you be vigilant in watching for me and in telling folks about me. So those of you who are members of this congregation, think on these things. Be willing to roll up your sleeves. You have been blessed. I understand you had two pastors that covered like 40 some odd years. You have been so blessed to have that longevity in pastors. Uh, not everyone's blessed with that. But whomever comes here, be willing to, you know, get harnessed up and start pulling the plow and doing your part and your share. It, it takes all of us collectively working together to make the kingdom function smoothly type thing. I love you. Jason, we love you for uh, allowing us to come and to share our music, and our message. We're going to do a closing song, and we'll turn it over to Leon, and he can dismiss the folks and turn them loose. Let's do a little bit of get all excited. Put your hands <laughs> together. Clap right here. Come on. You can do it. There you go. One, two, Get all excited, go to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited, go to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Why don't you get all excited, go to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. But Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Oh, get all excited, go to tell everybody that Church, keep on keeping on. Come right ahead, Leon, and dismiss these fine folks. Thank you all for being present. Thank you guys for coming. I got a red light on my battery. I'm about out, but I think I got enough here. Uh, I assume you guys are going to be back there and with your uh, CDs and so forth, right? Come back and come back and grip and grin us. Busy? All right, very good. Thank you all for coming tonight. They were they were great, weren't they? We all got a blessing out of that. All right. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll be on our way. Johnny, would you lead us this evening as, as we close? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just thankful to be here tonight. Thank you for these two men, Lord, that come and shared the gospel with us tonight, Lord, through their music and their testimony. And, Lord, I just... <coughs> Pray for them, Lord, as they get on the highway and, and head home. Lord, we, we pray for traveling mercies for them. Thank you, Lord, for their ministry. Thank you, Lord, that they've lifted us up tonight, Lord, and, and uh, put us in a worship mood. And Father, I just pray that uh, you'll continue to be with Central Baptist, Lord, as we go forward. We just pray, Lord, that you'll just guide us through the next several weeks in our church, Lord, as we have the change in, in our get a new pastor, and we just pray, Lord, that you'll just help us to rally around and, and so give him all the support that he needs. And, Lord, again, thank you for this time tonight. We've had this great time of these men that shared their time and their talents with us, and we just pray, Lord, that uh, you'll just continue to bless their ministry. Father, we just pray these things in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
All right, thank you. You guys are dismissed. Thank you for coming tonight.